Federal Hill is arguably Providence, Rhode Island's most famous culinary neighborhood. Originally settled by Irish immigrants in the early 1800s, the neighborhood saw a huge influx of Italian immigrants, mostly from southern Italy and Sicily, starting in the late 1800s, creating Providence's Little Italy. The iconic La Pignola Archway greets you as you enter the east part of Federal Hill. Often mistaken for a pineapple, La Pignola is actually a pine cone, the Italian symbol of welcome, abundance, and quality. It's a fitting symbol for an area with such an abundance of great Italian food. In part two of our exploration of Federal Hill, we're getting a taste of two beloved classic spots, Caserta's and Pastiche. And we'll also be taking you into the kitchens of two newer spots, Pane Vino and Massimo, that have reinvigorated the neighborhood with their authentic, award-winning regional Italian cuisine. Join us as we go into the heart of Federal Hill on a taste of Rhode Island. Rhode Islanders are intensely proud of their history, culture, and above all, their food. With over 400 miles of coastline, diverse cultural influences, and a rich tradition of fishing and farming, Rhode Island is a food lover's mecca. We're taking you on a trip across the ocean state to taste the food and meet the chefs, farmers, brewers, distillers, and winemakers that make Rhode Island one of America's most exciting food cultures. From classic to cutting edge, this is a taste of Rhode Island. Wow, look at this, this is gorgeous. This program has been brought to you in part by Cisco Boston, providing food service products to our New England customers for over 40 years. Good things come from Cisco. And Rich's Sweet Heat. It's not a barbecue sauce, it's not a hot sauce, it's Rich's Sweet Heat. Two of Federal Hill's most award-winning Italian restaurants are both owned by the DeQuattro family. This is my family, and welcome to Pane Vino and Massimo. Pane Vino, located on the west end of Atwells Avenue, is a favorite among those seeking an authentic, old-world, southern Italian experience in a rustic, cozy space. My name is Sam DeQuattro. We're here at Pane Vino Restaurant on Federal Hill. Pane Vino uh, has been there for 15 years. Uh, it's based off of my father's grandmother's family recipes. Uh, she was born and raised in Itri, a small town in the Lazio region of Italy. And she immigrated here with her family in the early 1900s and bought a house in Narragansett. And that's kind of where my father found his inspiration. And uh, going to Sunday dinners with the family and seeing the food come out and she would cook three meals a day uh, every day of the year and the food kind of had a magic about it where it would bring people together and that's kind of where the inspiration came for Pane Vino. They wanted to use these recipes and the same food and ingredients and kind of make it come alive for Pane Vino and you know have people really have an educational experience um, when they come in and dine and experience the flavors and try to take them back to where it all came from. Panevino sources almost all of their seafood locally, including Point Judith calamari and New Bedford scallops. But the most popular seafood dish here is the aqua pazza, meaning crazy water which refers to a dish of North Atlantic halibut simmered in a traditional sauce made from tomatoes, olive oil, and generous additions of sea salt. We're going to go in the kitchen and prepare for you our specialty dish there, our La Copazza, featuring the North Atlantic halibut. And to that we're going to add our tomatoes, garlic, and white wine. Then we add some fresh sea salt and some parsley. 
Then we add the couscous and we cover it and let it poach for a good 10 minutes. So now this is going to poach for 10 minutes. And while that poaches, we're going to make the escrow. A little more olive oil. Garlic. Red pepper flakes. Add a little bit of chicken stock to give it a little bit of flavor. And we make this homemade every day. These are Calabrian chilies. We import them from Italy. Um, it's where the owner's from. So everything that we basically use here is all imported from Italy. Um, we like to keep everything really like true to, like you coming to an Italian restaurant, we want to keep everything true to being Italian. the best restaurant in Providence. I love it. I'm from Italy. It's like a back home. Salute. Salute. Down the road towards La Pignola, Massimo features regional Italian cuisine in a stylish, sophisticated setting. So here we are at Massimo, um, sister restaurant to Pane Vino. Here we uh, source our food from local farms in Rhode Island as well as importing products from Italy. It covers all regions of Italy and what we like to call Italy to table or what you would see in Italy today. Uh, here at Massimo, we have our hand-carved prosciutto. Um, each server uh, goes to the carving station and they slice it fresh daily. All right, so here we have our prosciutto di Parma that we hand-carve for our guest. Um, if you take a look here, we have a stamp on here that states Parma, uh, which means that it actually came from the region of Parma. We also have two little buttons here that state when the prosciutto was hung so that we know how long it has been aged for. Um, if we look closely on here, we have an LUG 15, which means that this leg of prosciutto was hung in August of 2015, making it almost three years now. And the beautiful part of slicing hand-carved prosciutto is that it's a little different than you would have on your slicer. Um, so when the prosciutto is hung and aged, all of the salt from the cure comes down to the bottom. When we slice our prosciutto on the slicer, we slice from point A to point B, making this a very salty cut. When we hand-carve, we slice from A to B here, which gives us a nice sweet and a nice salty prosciutto, making a nice balanced flavor. We are one of 12 restaurants in the United States that are part of the Prosciutto de Parma Specialist Club, and we are one of 12 restaurants that actually hand carves the Prosciutto de Parma for our guests. Now we're going to go into the kitchen of Massimo and prepare two specialty dishes, our spaghettoni alla carbonara, as well as our pan-seared sea scallops over a sweet corn risotto. to prepare a spaghetti alla carbonara. We're cooking the one chowder right here. A little olive oil. Okay, so we have what we want. So next, we're going to make the, the paste, the sauce. So that we're going to use a one fillet. 
some black pepper. I'm going to whisk a little bit. Okay. So now we're going to add a pecorino romano. Got it right here. Alright, so we're going to whisk it more. So now we're going to grab a spaghetti. Oh yeah. Right here. Cook already. About eight ounces. We're going to drop in the pasta machine. Pasta ready. We're going to grab the pasta. Take pain. We're going to get all the flavor from the mascara. Just a little bit. Alright, so we're going to end on the bowl. So here we want to use a little bit of water from the pasta machine. Okay, okay. A little more Now we're going to add a little egg yolk right on top. Right. A little black pepper. Here. Yes, sir. So ready to go. Spaghetti alla carbonara. Here is Carlos dish. So we want to start uh, grab the risotto here. So we want to make a sweet corn risotto. So I got great, great corn right here. I got sweet corn puree here. So we want to put a uh, pecorino romano. We go on to a heavy cream. A little bit of butter. So these two pan, one is gonna be for the sear scallops, and the other one is gonna be to make a char Brussels sprouts. Red uh, red mustard greens. So a red wine reduction. Scallop dish with sweet corn risotto and char brussels sprouts.
scallops are delicious. They have that perfect sweetness that matches with the sweetness of the corn risotto, but the corn risotto is a little bit creamier and savory, and it has a great texture because of the fresh corn. This is a phenomenal dish. And the Brussels sprouts, the charred Brussels sprouts, and that beautiful risotto. We're gonna have to put a little bit more of that gorgeous scallop on there. Mmm, let's give it a bite. So one of the exciting things happening in Rhode Island is now all these classic foods that used to need to be imported are now being made right here in Rhode Island, like this burrata. And that's really exciting. It's not coming from overseas. It's coming from right here in the state. And why not? You can taste how fresh that cheese is. It's just so fresh. Perfect, right there, that is perfect food, right? Burrata.